Hello everybody, my name is Karish and welcome to another recap video. This time, we're talking about a latest Indonesian horror movie, The Verge of Death, based on a real story. If you're familiar with Indonesian horror, then it goes without saying that the most horror movies from Indonesia are based on some sort of black magic. And this one's no different, except the fact that something like this might have happened in real life. Before we get into it, you must subscribe to my channel if you haven't, cause this is the best place to find horror from around the world. And with that said, let me exploit the story of the Verge of Death for you. So the movie begins in 2001, with a family that includes Nadia, her brother Yoga, her mother Mirna, and her father Soitano. Now Mirna was sick for some time now, and Soitano has refused to take her to a hospital for some reason. She was suffering with a strained disease that resulted with her body being covered in pus-filled ulcers. She never left her room and one day, Mirna told Nadia to always follow what her dad says. Suddenly, Mirna coughed blood and Suitano and Yoga arrived at the scene. The kids told the father to call an ambulance but he refused to do so. Suitano then went and locked himself inside the room, even when Yoga told him to stay with Mirna. Inside, Suitano talked to someone and told that someone to not harm his wife, which made it evident that there was something in the house. After a few days was New Year's Eve and Nadia and Yoga were still worried for their mother when she called him from the kitchen. The two went and were shocked to see that somehow Mirna was doing better and she had cooked him the last meal of the year. Seeing Mirna in a better state, Suitano was glad too. The family did dinner together and as the ball drops, everyone wishes each other a very happy New Year. But just a few seconds later, something happened to Mirna and she ended up leaving the dining table and went inside the kitchen. Nadia followed her mom for some water, but then she found her mother with her head inside a pot full of boiling water. Nadia screams and Suitano helped her wife, but her face has been dissolved into the water and she died on her way to the hospital. Three months later, we see Suitano is running a fine business now. The family was not struggling financially at all, but the strange thing was that Suitano started his business just after his wife died. Not only that, but he had been running renovations in his house for three months now and Nadia and Yoko were a bit confused about everything. Suitano had told the kids to not clean their mother's blood and he placed new tiles over the blood-stained ones. Yoga feels that something is off with his father, but one day when he was in his mother's room, one of the new tiles moves. The tile slid open and Yoga found a deep hole below it. He decides to peek inside, but suddenly, something grabs Yoga and tries to pull him under. He was lucky because Nadia was right there and she helps him. However, Nadia was unable to see everything that Yoga was saying. Yoga then witnessed scorpions slithering out of that hole and he ran away, although Nadia couldn't even see the hole. At night, Yoga was stressed and during dinner, he blames his father for Mirna's death because he was the one who refused to take her to a hospital. But in response, Suitano scolded Yoga and even smacked him hard. Late at night, Nadia decided to sleep beside her brother and comfort him, but Yoga couldn't sleep. After a while, he hears Mirna's voice and she was calling his name. He gets up and follows the voice and soon witnesses Mirna's shadow. He ended up finding his mother in the kitchen near boiling water and when he approached her, suddenly her neck breaks and she scared Yoga away. It was then that Suritano came in the kitchen and Yoga hid from his father. Suitano takes a knife with him and Yoga knew that every night Suitano checks on his kids so he became stealthy, went back to his room and pretended to be asleep as Suitano checked on him. After his dad left, he followed him and saw his dad going inside that same room he kept locked and off limits. Now Yoga peers through the keyhole and he sees something that left him speechless and from here the scene goes 9 years later in 2011. We get to find out that Yoga was struggling with some stuff that he claims is demonic, but Nadia's convinced that he's having mental health issues. The siblings were all grown up and Nadia advises Yoga to visit a psychiatrist. However, there was something still strange. 
the renovations that began after Mirna died were still underway. So Itano always had up a room or something in the house and for some reason, that day, Yoga told Nadia that he saw something in the secret room nine years ago and now Nadia's old enough to see it herself and finally find out who their dad actually is. He told her to stay awake that night and she obliged. At night, Suitano came to check on Nadia and she pretended to be asleep. But after that, Yoga came and brought Nadia at the door to the secret room. That night, Nadia peers through the keyhole and her spine shivered because inside, Suetano was sacrificing a black goat. He was covering himself with its blood and was doing something demonic. Seemingly, Suetano was praising an evil entity and that was why he made his kids follow weird rules in the house. Yoga and Nadia hides as Suetano came out with the dead goat and he takes it outside in the yard to bury it. Yoga and Nadia follows him, but Nadia was furious, so in the end she showed herself, scolded Suitano and asked what the fuck is he doing at the house. In the meantime, Yoga went and broke open the secret door. He was about to go in when Suitano came there with Nadia and stopped Yoga. Yoga blamed him that he underlined Mirna with his black magic bullshit, but then Suitano revealed what was happening. Actually, you see, Suitano and Mirna were broke after their marriage and their business failed as well. They needed financial stability for Nadia and Yoka, so they ended up taking an appointment with a black magician. That magician helped the family and let Suitano make a deal with the demon, who can give him everything they ever wanted in return of a black goat sacrifice every month. They made the deal, but after some time, something happened and the demon started to torment Mirna. Mirna realized that the demon wants to claim her soul, but why? We'll find this out in the end. Suitano knew since the beginning that his wife would die, but she made him promise that he'll not fight back with the demon and protect the kids no matter what. After that, the demon took Mirna away on the New Year's and hearing that story, Yoga was furious. He went inside the room and smashed the altar and broke the demonic statue even after Suitano basically begged him to stay calm and then suddenly the lights goes out. Suitano asks the demon for forgiveness as Yoga left the room and the door locks itself shut and the siblings were then alone. They tried to run when suddenly an 8 feet tall entity appeared in front of him. Scared, they ran the other way but now wherever Yoga was going, he saw some sort of evil spirit that scared him enough, he started screaming out his lungs. Meanwhile, Nadia was unable to see the spirits. Next day, Nadia searched on the internet, hundred ways to get rid of a curse when a student displayed her screen in front of the class, and Nadia became the creepy freak. She left the class and went to the library, where she met a guy named Betsy Owl who was the in charge of the library and he knew like everyone else what happened to Nadia. However, instead of laughing at her, Betsyal comforted her and even let her rest in the library. After school, Nadia came back home but the electricity was still out. Nadia then got a call from a friend of Suitano who was worried for her dad because he hadn't seen him since the morning. Nadia then called her dad but he didn't pick up and she was unable to get in touch with him all day. At night, Nadia called Yoga and told him to come back home early because she's alone and the lights were still out. After a while when Yoga didn't show up, Nadia went to her neighbors to charge her phone. The neighbors were welcoming but while charging her phone, Nadia finds out something strange. The neighbors were eating goat meat given by Suitano and apparently he does this a lot and this meat somehow helps cure disease in the family. Meanwhile, Yoga arrived back home and he was looking for Nadia when he heard her screaming. He followed the scream and found Nadia standing in a corner of the bathroom. He approaches her, but then suddenly... Nadia turns into this demonic, creepy entity and screamed at Yoga. Yoga ran to save his life, but wherever he goes, Nadia follows. He ended up hiding in a corner, but evil Nadia found him. But before something bad could happen, real Nadia came back and she saved Yoga. Entity disappears and after a while, Suitano returns home. Nadia asked him where he was, but he was already late and he needed to sacrifice the goat so he ignored her. Nadia tried to make her dad understand the fact that they can live with this demon all their life, 
But according to Suetano, if they try to fight back, the demon will kill them all. Then Nadia remember what her mother told her once, that she needs to listen to her dad no matter what, to protect her brother. And that was why that night, Nadia helped her dad with the sacrifice. After the sacrifice, Nadia and Suetano buried the goat in the yard, and Yoga was against all of it. But seeing her sister helping her dad, he too ended up relenting. The whole family then cut the goat meat and the next day it was distributed between the good neighbors and this became the way that protected their family. Six months later, everything was well and fine and Nadia and Yoga were pretty sure that they're gonna live a fine life as long as they sacrifice goats. Not only that, but Yoga found a way to make the demons disappear. He found out that if the demons are all around, all he needed to do was close his ears and the demon would disappear. That night, was the New Year's Eve and the family were roasting corns in the yard. It was cool, so Yoga went to his room to fetch a jacket. But as he pulled out a jacket, the door locks itself shut, startling Yoga. He goes near it, but then something opened his wardrobe. Confused, Yoga went and locked the wardrobe, but that something opened its door again. Scared, Yoga ran to save himself, but just outside the room, standing was the demon and seeing him, Yoga closes his ear. It was then that 2012 begins and Nadia came back to check on her brother. But she was left speechless when she witnessed her brother falling down from the ceiling with his entire body covered in blood and flesh. The demon had attacked on him and then it beats the shit out of him in front of Nadia and she couldn't do anything to save her brother. The demon ended up breaking Yoga's neck and he died that night, leaving Nadia hella depressed. Scene goes on his funeral where Yoga's body was taken outside the house. Now when Nadia was about to re-enter the house, she stops because there was an entity in front of her. It was Yoga's spirit and seeing him, Nadia screamed and closed her ears. And this trick worked because soon the entity disappeared. But this made Nadia worried because it was the first time the evil tried to scare her. After a while, we find out that Soitano's business was thriving more than ever, but he didn't seem very happy about it, and it gave us a hint that there might be something more black in that already black magic that we're not aware of. Meanwhile, Nadia was then in medical school, and one day she was performing an autopsy on a frog, when suddenly, the demon appeared and threw a goat's head on a table. She screamed and ran away, went to the library, where once again came Betsy All, who saw her running in the hallway earlier. Betsy Al found out that Nadia was taking antidepressants and he told her to stay calm. He comforts her and gave her an advice about writing her thoughts down if she can't share them with anyone and he promised that this would help. Nadia felt good after the advice and that was why since that night, she starts to write everything down in a diary. At night, Nadia attends the voice of her brother and she obviously goes after it. The voice was coming from inside the secret room and when she opens it, she was horrified because that demon was eating the corpse of Yoga. There was blood and guts everywhere and then the demon scratched Nadia's arm before disappearing. Nadia told everything to Suitano and Suitano was then in shock. Nadia told him that the demon had eaten Yoga's and Mirna's soul and now Nadia was thinking that he's after her. Suitano had something in mind and that was why the next day he stopped his car and took Nadia somewhere in the middle of nowhere. On their way, Nadia saw an old woman who was watching her in a really creepy way, but Suitano was unable to see her, so he told her to not pay attention. After a while of travel, the woman appeared once again, and then it was evident that she's a ghost. In the end, the woman came just in front of the car, and Nadia panicked enough that she caused their car to get into an accident. She closed her ears, thinking that the woman would disappear, but then the woman came inside the car, and Nadia ran away deep into the woods. Since she ran farther from her dad, she starts to look for him. She found a gutter-type place, and after crossing it, she found a man. Thinking it's Suitano, Nadia approaches him, but the man was just under the spirit, waiting to scare her away. She ran, but then everywhere she goes, the spirit followed. There were dozens of spirits now, and she had no clue what they want from her. A demonic kid ended up making her fall as he climbs onto her. Nadia screamed, and the spirits began to hover around, resulting in Nadia passing out. When she woke up, 
She found herself in a wooden house and she heard Suitano's voice talking to someone and asking for help. She goes to check it out and found Suitano with an old man talking about black magic. Then she found a room filled with family photos but some of the photos had black spots on him and they were the people Nadia just saw in the woods. Then the old man and Suitano came there and the old man reveals that those were the people he helped and it means the man is the black magician. According to him, the people who didn't follow the rules and regulations ended up losing their lives, like your father and this scared Nadia. It was revealed that the black magician helped Mirna and Suitano and told them the sacrifice in black goats would be enough for the demon. But Suitano became greedy and he asked the demon for more things and in return, the demon changed the deal the black magician initially made. The demon ended up asking for human sacrifice and obviously, Suitano couldn't do that so he decided to ignore the demon which broke the magician rules and cause the demon had already changed the deal so he came and took her wife away in 2002 and now he had taken his son and he would not stop until he takes everyone away from Suitano and in return, Suitano will get everything he wants. Hearing this, Nadia was in shock cause it basically means the demon will come for her too. She scolded her dad but the worst thing was that the magician had no way to break this curse. So Itano apologized and promised Nadia that he won't let the demon take her away. He then takes her home and broke the demonic altar. Few days later, he stopped the renovation that has been going for more than 10 years. He sold his business and gave away every penny he had to poor. In a month, he became the man he was before the deal. He gave up everything the demon ever gave him in hope that the demon would leave Nadia alone. Their house was then kinda empty but one night, Nadia starts to beat her head in the wall. Scared, Suitano approaches her but she gave him a creepy smile before running into her room. Suitano followed her but Nadia was crawling on the walls. Nadia. <laughs> she then jumped on Suitano and started strangling him which made Suitano believe that the demon would not let him go this easy. Suitano ended up throwing Nadia away and knocking her out. But without further ado, he takes her out of the house and now he's gonna travel the world to find a cure. We see him praying for Mirna and Yoga's peace and traveling across Indonesia to find a priest who can help him. They had contacts of every possible priest and they were visiting him one by one. But no one was ready to help him. Days and time pass by and so in 2012 turned into 13. They even visit priests who work secretly but even they refuse to help him. Soon 2014 and 15 passed away and actually Nadia and Suitano were then living in their car. We see 2016, 17, 18, 19 and 20 pass by and then it was 2021 when they finally found a contact of a Muslim priest known as Mahaba who can possibly help him. They goes to her address which was in the middle of nowhere and there they met with a teenage girl spirit who guided them towards Maba before disappearing. Soon we find out that Maba is blind but she has some sort of special sight to see through people's souls cause when she looked at Nadia she knew everything about her. So Itano begged Maba for help and told her how he gave up everything but Maba scolded Soitano and told him that what he did was unforgivable and no matter what he does now there's no way to stop the demon from completing the deal. He will annihilate Soitano's world. She told him that the demon who's after him comes for a human sacrifice every 10 years and that was why he took Mirna on New Year's of 2002 and then took Yoga on New Year's of 2012 and now on New Year's 2022 he will come for Nadia. Soitano fell on Maba's feet and begged for help and Maba felt the pain of Nadia but she had no way out. There was only one way that will let them towards the end and Nadia will indeed die. That evening, it was revealed that Nadia had been scribbling into her diary for 10 years straight and she had written her entire story in it. Then came Suitano and assured her that they're gonna find another priest soon but then Nadia stopped her father cause she had accepted her fate. She made her father understand the fact that she had lived her life and maybe now it's time to give up and enjoy the little time they have left together. So Itano cried and begged for forgiveness and in the end, they returned home. At night, Nadia texted Betsyal and the next day the two meet at the ocean's shore. 
The Nadia thanked Betsy all for the advice he gave her 10 years ago and then she gave him a diary and made him promise that he would only read the diary after New Year's. The two then spent the day together and from here the scene goes 5 minutes before New Year's when Nadia and Suitano were sitting on the dining table. Nadia told her dad to go away because she did not want him to witness anything and Suitano had to obey the wish of her dying daughter. He hugged her for the last time and then left her alone. A few seconds later, the clock strikes on midnight and Nadia felt heavy. The lights flickered and the demon appeared behind her. He caught Nadia and she felt an excruciating itch in her body. She started scratching her blooded arms and soon the skin peeled off her hands. She screamed at the top of her lungs as the demon flayed her skin off her body and in the end, he cut her throat with a knife. Nadia died and the demon took her soul. Meanwhile, Suitano heard everything from behind a wall but he was unable to help. Now obviously, whatever happened was written in the diary and Betsy all read it. He visited Nadia's grave and believed what she had written in the diary and the diary became the source of this movie. In the end, we see Nadia's vacant house filled with the voices of Nadia, Mirna and Yoga attended by a depressed Suitano. Those voices were coming from that secret room and when he opened the door, he saw his family but their heads were goat's head which threw Suitano off the edge and he completely lost his mind. The door closed behind him and now you should come in below what you think happened to Suitano because this is where the movie ends. So this was a recap video of the movie The Verge of Death and I hope you have liked it. If you have, then hit that subscribe button, smash it, read the screen of your phone for the love of God. Also, like the video. If you want to watch the movie, there's a link to my telegram channel in the description box where I share movie links every now and then. So go subscribe there. I'm mostly active on Insta so you can follow me there and also check out my other channels where we discuss about the mysteries of the world. All the links are in the description box. For now, I'll see you all in the next one. Till then, stay awake because they always see you.